Hey guys, Andy here, and today on the debut episode of Q and Andy Japandi, I'm gonna answer your questions. Coming up. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome once again to my debut episode of Q and Andy Japandi. It's a new series here on the Andy Japandi channel where I answer questions submitted by you, my viewing audience. So, without further ado, let's answer some questions. So, the first question comes from Jim S. Do you think you have a balanced life as a student, classes, working, studying, and fun? It's hard saying since the uh, old Kelowna Chan World Tour forced everyone to change how they do things, but for me, I feel like I have a fairly laid back schedule. The classes are very manageable, as well as my work schedule. But with things as they are right now, I don't really go out and socialize quite as much as I wanted to when I first got back to Japan. Hopefully, as things clear up, I'll be more socially active and get out of the guest house more often. But for now, I tend to stay inside or within the neighborhood. What's the biggest difference from American education versus Japanese? Since the school I go to, Lakeland University of Japan, is an American college, I don't notice too much of an overall difference in education. However, the main differences come from the student-teacher dynamics. Whereas a teacher in America would ask a hypothetical question and someone would answer, here in Japan, while the hypothetical questions are still asked, they are followed by an uncomfortable amount of silence, as everyone is too afraid to be wrong, so no one will answer the questions right away. Usually it takes me answering the first few questions to get them to warm up to responding, but that doesn't always work. How much, if any, Japanese do you need? Are you trying to learn? When it comes to knowing that Nihon Go, the majority of what I know is a carryover from when I was stationed in Yokosuka, as well as what I learned from my Japanese classes back in Kalamazoo. It sounds like I know a lot, but really, I need to make a conscientious effort to get better at Japanese. For me, I prefer to learn how to speak Japanese over learning how to read it, because let's face it, there's all kinds of translation apps out there that, while not perfect, can at least give you an idea of what's written. Don't get me wrong, I do want to learn how to read Japanese, but speaking is a higher priority for me. And I've often come across a lot of braggadocious foreigners who claim to have N2 level proficiency but can't order a cup of coffee to save their lives. As far as how much Japanese you should know before arriving, it depends on where in Japan you'll be staying. If it's in or around Tokyo, then learning just some basic phrases, hiragana, katakana, and some kanji will be sufficient. Outside of Tokyo, I definitely recommend putting more of an effort into studying Japanese. And the next set of questions comes from Dion from Dion's Travels. Now, Dion has a wonderful YouTube channel, so if you're into the digital nomad lifestyle, obviously, what's going on in the world right now, not really much of a possibility, but if you want to learn up on it, he's got you covered. What is the process for applying for a student visa? Anything difficult about it? I covered the process of getting a student visa in Japan in an earlier video, which I do recommend you check out for more details, but basically I just applied for it through my school and gave them copies of documents they needed and went from there. Also, what is the cost of living for studying abroad? So the cost of living while studying abroad in Japan is a hard one to pin down because everyone's situation is different. As for my cost of living, I want to make a dedicated video about it in the future to, if anything, help me curb some bad spending habits I have. But I will say that if you are willing to live humbly, whether in a guest house or a hostel or something like that, you can make it out here in Japan. As I recommended in an earlier video, I would have at least 3,000 to 5,000 USD to bring with you to live off of until you get money from elsewhere, whether it's from working, scholarships, the GI Bill, etc. As long as you're not a complete party animal, you should be able to get by on that for a few months. Also, what's the foreign to local student ratio and what's that day to day like? I think a day in the life video showing locations would be very visually stimulating. At my school, the foreigner to local ratio is about 70% local to 30% foreign. As for a day in the life video, I actually already have one recorded. I made it back when I was still living in Nakano, but I never really got around to putting it together just yet, so keep your eyes open for it. And so the next question comes from Nunya on my Discord. Do you use chopsticks? I do use chopsticks. Sometimes I only get a spoon or fork at the conveni, so I've saved a bunch of chopsticks that I didn't use, just in case. Or wear kimono? I don't wear kimono though, too much wrapping. Do you cook any Japanese dishes, and what kind? 
I don't really cook Japanese dishes per se, and my cooking's kind of Frankensteinish to begin with. Check out my kimchi fried curry rice video to see what I mean. And so the next series of questions comes from Monaki. What are things you brought to Japan that you wish you didn't? Maybe things that took up space or things you could easily get in Japan and you found out that after the fact? Looking back, I wish I would have just sold off my Game Boy Advance, DS, and 3DS games and systems instead of throwing them away. So since my flight was rebooked and my new flight had some stringent baggage weight requirements, I had to get rid of a lot of things. Aside from that, I'd say that I should have just brought over two weeks worth of clothing instead of three plus. My back would have thanked me for sure. What are things you wish you brought to Japan that are harder to come by in Japan? So the flip side to the earlier question is that I wish I would have brought more shorts to Japan. While I can get them on Amazon or even out in town in some places, they often don't have enough room for my thick as fuck thighs. So my stance is very narrow and I chafe more. A little TMI, but it is what it is. What are some things you have to special order online now that you live in Japan, if anything? So some things I have to special order in Japan would be, aside from clothes, shoes. I'm a size 11 in America, that's a size 29 here in Japan, and most stores cap out at size 28. I might get lucky and find shoes or slippers of my size, but more often than not, I will have to order them online. Another thing would be electronics. Pretty much all electronics in Japan will only have Japanese as an available language. If this isn't an issue for you, then by all means go for it. But for me, I don't like to think too much about things while I'm taking pictures or video clips, and especially not while I'm editing. The Japanese keyboard has an uncomfortably small space bar, and it drives me up a wall. What kind of things did you do back home to prepare for your move to Japan? What I did to prepare for my move to Tokyo was first, I sold all my stuff on eBay that I wasn't bringing with me. It gave me some extra money for the trip and more experience selling stuff online, which will come in handy down the road. Everything else that I couldn't sell or that my brother didn't want, I gave to Goodwill. Next, I did my research on where in Tokyo I wanted to live in. I found a guest house in Nakano that was close by to my school, so I got in contact with them to set up my place before I arrived. Guest houses in general like to know ahead of time if you're coming, so they're not like hotels where you can just show up unannounced and get a room, so be sure to book ahead. Finally, I made sure everything was good with my school as far as paperwork and classes goes. Thankfully, my school, Lakeland University of Japan, is on top of that stuff, so I didn't have to bug them too much, but your mileage may vary. Was there anything you wish you had done to prepare that you didn't do to prepare? What I'd wished I had done before moving to Japan, aside from my packing issues I talked about earlier, would have been to save up more money. While I had a good chunk thanks to cashing out my retirement plan, which I don't recommend you do unless absolutely necessary, just putting that out there, as well as money from freelancing, the GI Bill, and selling my stuff on eBay, my savings was woefully low by the time I landed in Japan. After all was said and done, I had about a thousand bucks American or so, which I do not recommend to anyone else to try to do unless you're just like coming over for a vacation or something. If it weren't for the kindness of my friends, I would not have made it to March, which is when my GI Bill kicked in. Money aside, I wish I would have learned more Japanese as well, but I probably would say that no matter what level I was at. Aside from getting your luggage and going through immigration slash customs, is there anything else you have to do while at the airport when you first arrive and are moving to Japan? There are a few things that you need upon arrival in Japan. When at immigration slash customs, if you are coming over on a student visa, you should definitely ask for an arubaito, which is a part-time job, form. This will allow you to work up to 28 hours a week and up to 8 hours a day on days you don't have school. Also, during breaks between semesters, you can work up to 40 hours a week as well. The form only takes a few minutes to complete and is approved just as fast. Trust me, even if you don't plan to work in Japan as a student, you never know if you'll need a little extra cash or if there's an interesting job opportunity available. If you don't fill out the Arbaito form at Customs, you can send it in the mail, but it usually takes a few weeks to process, so just get it done at Customs. You'll thank me later. Another thing to get when you arrive in Japan is a train IC card from either Suica or Pasmo. Doesn't really matter which one since they both work at the same stations. You can get them at most major stations and they'll allow you to ride the trains as smoothly as possible. They can also be used for purchasing things at the Konbini or even in vending machines close by or in a station. You can also get them branded as a commuter pass for when you're going to school or work if they provide transportation compensation. For me, I didn't get the commuter pass because I was going to ride my bicycle to work once I got my first GI Bill check, but then good old Kelowna Chan World Tour kicked off and we switched online classes and I decided to hold off on all that for now. What are some things you recommend to buy to make your life easier once you arrive and start living in Japan? 
One thing I would absolutely recommend everyone to get when they arrive in Japan is a SIM card. Something I forgot to mention earlier that you should bring with you to Japan is an unlocked phone. This way, all you need is a SIM card, which is way less expensive than getting a phone plan in America. For me, and this is hashtag not an ad, hashtag could be an ad, hashtag call me, but I use iVideo to get a SIM card for internet. I paid for nine months of it up front after doing a quick 10 day test run, and it'll cost me about $234 American, which is dirt ass cheap. You can also get a pocket Wi-Fi from them as well, but I'd recommend just getting a SIM card so you have one less thing to worry about charging up. I'd like to talk more about it, but that's all you get for hashtag not an ad. If you move into a guest house, what kinds of things do you recommend buying to make your stay better or more convenient? Now, before we get into that question, I want to talk about guest houses for a little bit. I highly recommend you go to a guest house to get started when you arrive in Japan. As I said earlier, you have to book them in advance, so you can't just roll in there unannounced and expect to get a room slash bed slash box on the spot. Some may require you to be in person to sign paperwork, so in that case, be sure to have some money for accommodations in the meantime. It varies from place to place, but that being said, starting life in Japan in a guest house is a great way to save money since they're far less expensive than an apartment or a hotel, or even dorms in some cases. Looking at you, Temple. It will also allow you to get a feel for the local area and the commute to and from school and or work without worrying about being stuck in a long-term lease. And if you don't like it, you can always move. I moved from my guest house in Nakano to the one out here in Kawasaki Kanagawa. While I'm farther away from the big city and my school, the environment here is more my style as it's laid back with plenty of nature around instead of just concrete. Plus I have my own private room, which is essential for me to work on homework and stuff in peace, as well as record these YouTube videos. As far as what to bring to a guest house to make things easier, it just depends on what's available at the guest house already. Most of them give you the essentials like a bed, pillow, sheet, comforter, etc. I would get the essentials that aren't provided like house slippers, shower sandals, toiletries, clothes hangers, scented stick diffuser, hand sanitizer or alcohol hand gels as called in Japan, paper towels, etc. You can get most of these at a 100 yen store like Daiso, so there's really no need to spend a whole lot of money on these things. School-wise, is there anything special you have to buy for school or is everything provided slash easy to come by? As far as buying things for school goes, you can get your supplies from Daiso or any other 100 yen store. Books are a bit trickier. I would recommend getting them on Kindle since you can use them immediately instead of having them shipped to you. And plus, they're usually a lot cheaper than buying them from the bookstore. Plus, you can rent some textbooks via Kindle, which makes it even cheaper. I would only buy from the bookstore as a last resort, but if you decide to go that route, you can sell the books back for them for a little bit of cash, so you can recoup some of the costs. Uh, there's also some, let's just say less than legitimate ways to acquire textbooks as well. Now, while I don't recommend that you get books that way, it is an option if you're in a pinch. I'm not gonna list any particular methods because I don't really agree with it, but the information is out there if you look for it and I'll just leave it at that. And the last, but certainly not least question is from Better Better Tanuki. If all the Kambini brands were in danger of going bust and you can only save one, what would it be and why? This is a fabulous question. For me, I would have to save 7-Eleven. The reason behind this is that it's the only place I can withdraw funds from, so if it went under, I'd be fucked. As far as where I rank them in terms of food and other items, it goes in descending order from best. Lawson's, 7-Eleven, Family Mart, and everything else. While I don't particularly hate the other Kambini chains out there, they're not as common as the top three, so I haven't needed to use them very often. When I have, they weren't really notably better than the others to where I wanted to go back to them specifically. So yeah, that was the debut episode of q and Andy Japandi, and if you have any questions about life in Japan, studying abroad in Japan, all that fun Japani stuff, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the boobity boops, and your questions could be in the next video. And I plan on making this a fairly regular series, um, maybe do it once or twice a month. Uh, I'll also be sure to post something in the community tab for uh, this channel when I'm looking to put up a new episode of q and Andy Japandi. So if you have any questions, be sure to put them in that post as well. And with all that said, this is the Andy San, signing for now. As always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Oh, 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 oh.